Rico, outpost of American democracy. This island was discovered in 1493 by Christopher Columbus, to whose memory this monument at Aguadilla is consecrated. Ruled by Spain until 1898, peopled by descendants of Spanish settlers. Hundred-year-old communities when the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock. Porticelli, a four-century-old church, symbol of Catholic tradition. La Fortaleza, the fortress, residence of the island's governor since 1533. Today, a new era. Ancient patios resound to the strains of modern music. But time-honored customs linger on. Here is the Sayas Choriao, a centuries-old Puerto Rican country dance. Behind old massive ramparts, modern structures symbolize Puerto Rico's progress during 43 years under the American flag. Its strategic position in an unsettled world now gives the island a new and vital importance, in the realization of which its two million peace-loving people are cooperating patriotically to forestall the spread of totalitarian tyranny to the shores of the Americas, and thus to uphold the traditions of the great Latin American patriots and teachers of whom not the least is De Ostos, illustrious Puerto Rican educator. The economic structure of Puerto Rico rests on a highly specialized agricultural system based on external trade relations. Sugarcane is king, the principal source of income. In 1940, 59% of all exports were agricultural products. Of this, 90% were sugar. Large sugarcane interests occupy the fertile coastal plains and furnish seasonal employment to workers in the cane fields. Thus, most of the farming population has been driven to the hills. Here, the principal crops are coffee and tobacco. Coffee shown here is grown in the shade of forest trees. Yams, yautias, and a large variety of other vegetables and fruits are grown for domestic consumption. 300,000 farm families live up here working the good earth, working it hard to get from their tiny farms the food necessary for subsistence, packing their products over steep and difficult trails to surfaced roads and the market. Yes, nearly two million people living on an island 100 miles long by 40 miles wide, less than 4,000 square miles, and most of these folks dependent on sugar cane for a livelihood. Less than one acre of arable land per person, Four acres for a family of five. Four acres of steep hillside in a country that must live on its agriculture. All, all of them must work. Men, women, boys, girls, many with no implement but a pico or a pointed stick. The Puerto Rican farmer manifests independence, thrift, and courage worthy of the highest praise. Witness Don Juan Pas Ruiz. By means of hard work, intelligent management, and the help of his family, he manages to grow on 22 acres about 75% of the food needed for his household of 19 persons. No movies, no auto, no radio, no eight hour day but supreme satisfaction in the knowledge of work well done. Don Juan is a native son of a countryside of extraordinary beauty. 
a land of blue skies and white surf, of majestic green mountains and magnificent sunsets, a land that yields a modest livelihood to people who Who shall say that Don Juan is not justified in the belief that he lives in a country favored of God? And who shall say that this humble but self-reliant head of the house is not, in the essentials that count, the peer of any farmer anywhere? But, though he may not complain, Don Juan does have his problems. And from now on, if he likes, he can have some help in solving them. The University of Puerto Rico is the headquarters of agricultural extension work started in 1934. Now a staff of about 100 extension workers gives a helping hand to the farmer, his wife, and his children. The College of Agriculture of the University of Puerto Rico develops trained personnel. From classes like these come the men and women who carry the message of better farming and better living to farm folks. Here we see the two agricultural experiment stations of Puerto Rico where experiments are conducted for the benefit of farmers. Here is a root of a rotenone plant, introduced into Puerto Rico from the East Indies and from which an insecticide, non-toxic to humans, is made. Experiments in perfume production from native plants are bearing fruit. Also, the culture and processing of vanilla beans. Bamboo furniture. Termite-resistant varieties of bamboo have been introduced, and by means of a vocational program, new uses are being developed. Successful varieties of bamboo are distributed to farmers. The Extension Service fosters the propagation and use of successful varieties of introduced plants. An objective lesson. An extension specialist teaches a group of farmers and 4-H club boys how to prepare a good fertilizer from farm refuse and chemicals. Here, 
farmers learn how to judge the characteristics of a good type of dairy cow. Topography does not favor the extension worker in this extremely rugged countryside. Though the island is crisscrossed with hard surfaced roads, the majority of the highland farms are reached only by steep and winding trails. Regardless of terrain, few farmers will miss the informative discussion groups when the county agent is in the neighborhood. Good men, these men of the hills, tillers of the soil as their fathers were before them, but with a new zest and zeal and a desire to help solve the agricultural problems of Puerto Rico. On nine demonstration farms such as this, result demonstrations are carried on and free stud service provided from purebred stock to improve native livestock. Here, farmers learn about tobacco seed selection. A demonstration plot designed to show how to keep topsoil in place. Poultry raising is encouraged. Through the extension service, farmers receive the full benefit of other action programs. For instance, trees from forest service nurseries go to reforest their lands. Here, the county agent is discussing a farm security loan with the farmer's family. To diversify agriculture, the Extension Service encourages the cultivation of winter vegetables for the mainland market. Marginal lands are proving suitable for cotton. The cultivation of Sea Island cotton on such lands is being fostered. Whole families of poor people find employment in these fields. Important as the farm itself is the farm home. Hence, home industries are encouraged. Under extension guidance, Senora Josefa de Morales raises and cans food for home use and for sale. Hard work, but this beautiful and comfortable home is the reward. Deft fingers making the lace for which the charming Puerto Rican women are famous. An art passed down from mother to daughter through the centuries. Hat making is an art with these women of Cabo Rojo. The extension service fosters these almost forgotten home industries to add to the family income. From these imported rags will be woven beautiful rugs. Farm women and girls are trained to do this kind of work, thus creating another home industry. About 7,500 farm boys and girls have joined the 4-H club movement in Puerto Rico. Listen to their 4-H pledge. By participating in social and civic activities, the rural youth trains for better citizenship. Dedicated to the betterment of farm life, their motto is, learn by doing, and they live up to it. 
hear a group of boys at the Vega Baja demonstration farm learn how to graft citrus trees. Four H girls are trained in the art of homemaking. Following the instructions of the home agent, they can the products of their home gardens. Girls of the Villa Machina 4-H Club of Sabana Grande take earnestly to their sewing project. Humble, thatched, typical home of many of the less than one acre farmers where the goat is the family cow. This 4-H Club boy, Rene Jimenez, shows us how to milk his goat his own way. Here we meet Umberto with his swan project. He is in fourth year high school, yet he takes on the added duties of caring for his animals. These girls of Calle make beautiful artificial flowers from native grasses. This is profitable work, but the 4-H clubs have brought something more to rural Puerto Rico. They have brought recreation to the farm. Activities that tend to make farm boys and girls healthier and happier. These girls of Luquillo make attractive and saleable dolls from seashells. Girls also have field projects. This senorita, a Vega Baca, takes us into her well-kept papaya grove. Thus, under the 4-H banner, an alert and healthy generation of rural youth is growing up to assume the grave responsibilities of citizenship. Boys and girls, well fitted both physically and spiritually to take their places in the councils of mankind. service on the one hand and the determination to build for a more bountiful future on the other, better farmers are improving farming. Better housewives are improving living. Better children are improving life itself. And when the hours of toil draw to a close and the sun goes down beyond the encircling seas, stout hearts glow with hope and boast of the will to work for a fuller life in rural Puerto Rico. <laughs>